Yes, Mr. Eric. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome to yet another episode of Conversations Kanisa and in the recent past we have made Conversations Kanisa to be at least that episode that will guide you towards making an informed decision when you're buying your car and uh, today we are still going to have a head-to-head -head review of two sedans that are very common in Kenyan roads. They are economical, they are comfortable, and they save you a lot of fuel. The question is, which one is better? I'll be your host, Eric Wakabi, Eric with a CK. Uh, you can follow me at a personal level on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And today is the day when we actually demystify or prove that Gary ni Toyota na Nissan ni Nissan too. My co-host on this one will be... <laughs> Your intro. <laughs> Your intro is not good. <laughs> Eric with a CK. I'll be Ibrahim Toloi definitely trying to help Eric demystify these facts and myths. Yeah, so uh, let's let's start by having this discussion. Yes. The, in the Kenyan car market space, people say that the premium is overrated. Yes. And people do look for alternatives whenever they want something in place of a premium. Mm. But we can attest that the premium has reigned supreme over a long time. But it does suffer mm. from the price tag. 100%. So the, the closest alternative to the premium is actually the Nissan uh, Silphi B17. B17 yes. And uh, we want to see if it's a viable contender. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the Prima Feishi and uh, today I'll let Ibrahim start. Ah, very good. Now what you see here, Eric Okabi, is the new version of the Silphi. Uh, it came in to save the image of the famous G11. Very nice design, elegant up and bella. You can see I have very nice LED strips running on my, my, my headlights. V platform, so V design language going on all across the car. So very nice, Sina Mambo Pambele, unless you want me to take into the engine right away or you want to perform your Prima Fashe first. Yeah, my Prima Fashe, you know, the Premio is designed to be simple. Yes. The Premio has seen, uh, this is the 260. Okay. The, the, the Premio originates from the Corona lineage. Yeah, so it's it's a baby of the famous Toyota Corona. So we saw the first generation of the Premio was the Premio 240. Now this is the Premio 260 and within the Premio 260 uh, there are uh, three facelifts. There was the first one that, that saw the light of day in 2007. We got a facelift in uh, around 2010, yes. around 2013 and now there is the new 2016 facelift that Mbugwa should put on the screen for guys to see. However, this is the 2016 pre-facelift edition. So this is the 2010. This is the, no, no, this is the 2010 2014. to 2016. 2014. Oh, 2014. Yes. 2013. So that, it's that, although now this is a basic spec of okay. the Premio. Okay. Now let's talk about the variants of the Premio. We have uh, the basic specs. It's available in four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive. Uh, we have the top spec of the Premio being the G Superior. Ah. What's the top spec of yours? Definitely here I have also several. Uh, so we st I think I'll stick to the Japanese market yes. where mostly we source cars from. So in Japanese market, I think for the B17, we have around three or four trims. Eh? So one of them is called the S Touring, which is the top spec. But we have the X, we have the G, and we have what we call the GL Grand mm -hmm. uh, from, from Japan. Uh, this one doesn't have four wheel or anything. We just have two wheel front drive uh, driven machine. So nothing in terms of options, in terms of four wheel, like the Premier. Oh, okay. Mm. Sawa. So, so to engage the engine, Danny? To answer the engine. This one, I think this one does not receive NFS sleeve. I think we just came from the G11 to the B17. To the B17. 100%. Yeah. I think mm. the next version will happen in the 2018. That's where we'll have another first lift. But for now, we just have this between the market of 2016 all the way to 2017. Can I tell you an interesting fact? Yes. This is the last generation of the Toyota Premium. The Toyota Premium was discontinued in 2021. So it's, it's, it's a sad reality, but we have seen great cars from Toyota get discontinued. The Vanguard was discontinued in 2014. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we will not have the premium around. We will have the premium around up to around 20... 21. 21. Yeah, so, so for us, we are still getting the We will have premiums in 2028. From but where? in the Chinese market, yes, while still... the but it's a very different car from what we have. Let's start with your engine. Very nice. Talk from what you made, Eric. Where are the same before you go to Nissan? Ah, me, me, but then you, you go to a car and you get an allergy. 
So sasa yeye nikianza ku nose bleed tu sana. I have a very nice to my uh, you as you can see. Uh, very nice. I think Okabi we have reviewed this car before. Yes. Same as uh, the premium, the premium. 60. So what we have here is a very simple engine, uh, the MR a8 DE. I've kid only fools about my name D na E na Manishani, so we won't get into that. But this is one very nice engine from, from Nissan. I think it has been an engine that was introduced to try and give a stable uh driving thrill on the Nissan platform and it has lived up to its name. Um what else do you want to know, Eric? Away from that. I think the other engine variants on this car. So we have we have I've told you about the MR8, uh the MR A8. Now we have the HR16. Okay, and then we have the MR16 DDT, the one that is turbocharged. But, but, we, but that one is not available in the Japanese it's market. It's not, yeah, but yes. it's an option. It's an option, yeah. <laughs> and then we have uh, the MR20, the mm. one that you'll probably get in, a, in, in, in the Nissan Sylvie that you'll buy locally or from South Africa. So, but this one from Japan, we have the MR8. One, one interesting thing about the MR8, MR8 is that it actually has dual variable valve timing. Yes, twin at the top. Yes, at the top. Very nice technology mm. going on there. And very nice fuel economy. Because of that, it gives you very nice fuel economy. The output here, I think, from the first review we did, it gives you up to 18 kilometers to a liter of petrol. Yes. Which is very interesting and very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, so now, paired to this MR8 engine is where... Nissan a little bit uh, did something new. They tried to refine a new CVT transmission or Kabi to curb the problems that the previous CVT had. Uh, this CVT is called the CVT-7. Uh, according to them, uh, they had refined it and renewed it so that it makes, you know, it makes a better CVT. Uh, so that is it there. Uh, it's smaller slightly compared to the previous CVT transmission that was there. Uh, but again, I don't want to talk about the problems. I want us to talk about the problems once we finish. With can, the I, can I can I talk? Can I tell you some, uh, maybe one or two things about this particular gearbox? Mm -hmm. Now, when Nissan were trying to to refine it, yes. they they put in a computer software that is called the the, the D-Step Logic. Mm -hmm. Now, what that does, it makes this the gearbox feel like it's an automatic because. Uh, the 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 D step logic is basically that software uh, it 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 utilizes uh, engine speed vehicle speed application speed and throttle position to try and put the car in the ideal gear so it it feels like an automatic it's basically Nissan trying to get rid of the whine that was in the previous CVT and the noise and also the sluggishness and make it feel more like a car that is being driven more like an automatic the big question that I will ask at the end of it when we are comparing the two CVTs is whether that engineering did it come with its own share fair of problems or <laughs> <laughs> we'll answer that as we after we finish your end of the bargain on the Toyota now yes uh, whatever Ibrahim has said mm. Uh, basically, I can say that is child's play uh -huh. when it comes to the famous uh -huh. uh, Toyota, the legendary Toyota Premio. Chuma Adoshi kama kawaida. Chuma Adoshi. That one I will share with you a spoiled point. Yeah. Uh -huh. So one thing about the Premio is that it comes with three engine options. You have the 1500cc 1 and Z, you have the 2ZR and you have the 3ZR. The 2ZR is 1800, the 3ZR is... Uh, Two liter, yes. but now within the ZR family, there is uh, there are several variants. Now for the two ZR that is not valvematic, it's called the two ZR FE. But with valvematic applications, you get the two ZR FAE, yeah. right? Mm. So the A in Toyota's engine naming convention signifies valvematic. Mm. Same case, there is a three ZR FE and the three ZR FAE F -A -E for valvematic applications. Sawa sawa. Yes, sir. So if we are doing apples to apples, yes. then I would I would compare this, this to, the, the to the 2ZR ZR. FAE. Now what is valvematic? Because most people ask what is valvematic. Now uh, Ibrahim's engine has twin. 
it has double variable valve timing yes. which in to toyota's name would be dual vvti because toyota actually has dual vvti technology but it goes a step higher to have what is also called valvematic technology so mostly in conventional cars like ibrahim's cars there yes uh, the amount of air getting into the combustion chamber is controlled by the throttle now on a valvematic engine it is not controlled by the throttle it is controlled by variable by adjusting the lift of the valves and also the opening and closing so that makes it more efficient and that is why the premier with the 2ZR can give you as much as 18 kilometers to the liter. Mm. Same numbers on the Sylphid. Yes, only that this one is more reliable. Uh, the engine? Yeah, the engine. No, we will talk about a little bit of problems around yes. your engine. But so, go to the CVT. The, the CVT, the transmission that is uh, mated to this engine is actually a very reliable. Uh, it's, the Toyo it's in the family of the Toyota KCVT. Mm. And it has been one of the most reliable CVTs in the world. Actually, Toyota's KCVT is made by Isin, and it features some technologies as well. It, there, there is what uh, Toyota calls Super CVT-I. Now, that is an intelligent CVT that can uh, be able to tweak the ratios of the belt according to, you know, what uh, the driving dynamics. Meaning, it has what you can offer with the D-step logic, yes. but this one, under this one, is called the Super CVT-I. Ah. Ah, interesting. Yes. I, I can see a similarity of technology between Nissan and Toyota. Yes. Just difference in them. Mm. The only problem and the biggest question we're going to answer is which one holds up. Exactly. Which one does hold up? So before to your machine before a side profile. Yes. So now I know directly on my end, I know the problems I'm facing. You're losing <laughs> big time. You're losing hands down. Especially when I come to the CVT. So however much they did a refinement or an improvement of the previous CVT, what are the common problems that you know I'm, I'm going to deal with when I'm buying this car? Uh, if you buy the Nissan Selfie B17, First of all, he, 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 he. Uh, even a failed throttle <laughs> positioning sensor <laughs> will, will, have, will, will, make, will make this car have erratic shifting. Uh -huh. Because of what you said, the system, the design mm, where... That, that uh, software. Yes. Because Which it utilizes throttle three. positioning, uh, the TPS, the vehicle speed. That is why even, uh, even these cars have been known to have, you know, failed speed sensors. Yes. Uh, even when the throttle positioning uh, sensor fails, you get hard shifting or delayed shifting. Uh, solenoids have been a problem in this car. For the, for the longest time. For the longest time, transmission solenoids on the B17 have been a headache. And even today, uh, I, I have carried my evidence. You have carried Actually, your evidence. Actually, in Ponyme, Ibrahim, yes. a chat I had with somebody telling me to source a gearbox for this, for this car. car. And that car is a KDL. And the cost of the transmission, 170000 That's a deal. You only a deal. So, so could be higher than that. Okay, buy the around 200000 Okay. The gearbox unit. Okay. Okabi. That, that, those are the problems. So we don't have a problem really much with the MRA8. It is, it is not the most reliable compared to this, yes. by the way. If you put it apples to apples to that... Uh, this one this one has been tried and tested but it has still some issues so i want i want to make a defense dog for the cvt if you bought this car okay, and you have a cvt and you are planning not to have these problems or car i think there are a few recommendations that we've done on this channel over and over again and i'll still make them for this car one routine maintenance shorter service intervals 35,000 kilometers 35 kilometers that 5,000 kilometers you'll be a bit we won't say you will be safe, but you'll improve the chances of not having that failure. Exactly. Number two, as you always said, an extra oil cooler will be very, very, very much welcome on this CVT. Mm. So it can help you improve again the heat uh, dissipation, the, 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 the heat problem around this transmission. Yes. I think uh, the others is a matter of uh, design flow. So whatever comes your way, you deal with it the way you deal with it. Jatko has never designed good gearboxes. But I hear they have an improvement on this CVT again from 2018. And the 2018 going forward has reported very good, very good credibility. Now, unfortunately, yes. with Jatko, with yeah. every refinement, yeah. it can only get worse. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back to yours. I think on your end, uh, there's nothing much to discredit, even though there are few. On your CVT, bulletproof. My, my CVT, in fact, yes. if you don't use NS3 on that CVT, yes. you're, you're gone. 
Now, now, that, is now that, that is another problem because on this one again, if you get the wrong fluid, uh, you, you're you are toast 100%. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we cannot deny of the B17. However, on your end, you have a very nice CVT, but I hear your engine has some few problems. Uh, well, uh, beginning with that technology you mentioned, the valve Valvematic technology, yes. Uh, let me defend it. Mm -hmm. You know, these, uh, the, the Valvematic variants of the Premium have been around for a very long time. Yes. But to share Yona Ikiwa Kandaya Barabara, there has been some problems with the sensors. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about Toyota engines is that you just replace small sensors and it, it works fine. And that is the subject you talked about, resilience. Yes. I think what you're attributing the Toyota to, it's a bit more resistance. It's, it's not a bit more resistance. It's, re it's bulletproof. <laughs> it's <No>. bulletproof. <laughs> Okay, problem number two, Okabi. There have been reported issues around your water pump. Again, on these two ZR, especially the FAE, water pump failures. Now, as in a sumbo, they do the thing that you've advised them to do all the time around deleting the, what, how do we call it, the thermostat, you know? No, actually, mm. yes. I have not. Uh, uh, let, me, let, me, let me make this straight. Yes. Let's, let's use real data. Mm -hmm. How many guys, and I would like you to comment, to comment down below. Nani yame sumbuliwa na premium? No, pre why you're is, specific. Why you're is, specific. is the still the resale value? Most premiums actually in the Kenyan market have the 2ZR. The 2ZR, the FAE. Most of them the have F the FAE. F okay. Most of them, from 20, I think 14, most of them have the FAE. Mm. But so, I know, I know premium, this engine is one of the engines that has had massive deletion of the thermostat. I don't know why. But well, again, those are the only common things that I've, I've noted. But I want us to agree on something. Yes. You cannot compare, compare the reliability of the 2ZR to, to that thing. No, don't call it a thing. <laughs> <laughs> don't call it a thing. Okay, to we that will sue you. We will sue you. Because, you see, yes. the, the other thing about, about that engine is that it has the MR8. It yes. has not been around for a long time. Mm. This engine, has, the 2ZRs have been here for a long time. Let me ask you. It's only that now... Uh, it's only that right now we cannot get a manual trans from Japan. But do you think if we pair this car to a manual transmission, I think the other marks that have reported very awesome reliability cred on this car, based with the idea that they are meted to a manual transmission, especially the six, six speed manual transmission. That is true, but mm. uh, it will not be as reliable as a premium. That's, that's hands down. Okay. Mm. I think Toyota's you... Kaizen mm. philosophy has made their cars very easy to maintain. Now, do you know the cost of maintenance? So, but relax, relax. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think one thing we can agree, Eric, in terms of reliability, the we cannot put we cannot this new car on the same platform. Exactly. 100%. Ah. Hey, Ebu, 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 Guza. You have to add your plastic. Who pick up Zuri? Yours is worse. Side profile. What's that? <laughs> now, the side profile of the Premio, yes. I must say, they are almost the same size. Okay. Uh, yours is a little bit more trendy. Yes. Uh, with, the, with the Premio, we get discs all around with the juice, G Superior. Uh -huh. But these other ones get discs at the front and yes. drums at the back. Okay. They are the, they are the trim levels. They are, they are trim levels. Same to that end, I think. Mostly, do I have, I also have drums? Yes. On the basic. But the, the, the sporty version, the, the S touring, I think gets also discs. And very good alloy rims, I must confess. Your mm. G Superior gets alloy rims? Yes. Sasa Hapa, I have on basic, I have alloy rims, as standard, by the way. No, 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 they are not standard. They are not standard? They are not standard on that vehicle. Are they you are serious? rims, yes. Lakin we have a lot of rims, most of the time. No. The basic trim levels. They, they are optional. Oh, they are optional. Yes, you can, you can always choose. Sounds your premium. Eh? Ah, yeah. Where do we move next, Banokabi? <laughs> Let's talk about the interior. The interior. Oh, now, we, we do the practical uh, nini of... The interior, we have to be inside to feel the interior. Yes, although, although I, would, I would argue yes. that, uh, well, the B17 gets a better interior, interior compared to the premium. That's, Build quality. That's, that's, that's the... But it's, it's bigger brother, it's older brother had a, a very bad record. Hideous, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> and that's why when I began uh, the introduction of the B17, I said it actually came to redeem the name that the G11 had, you know, given us. And I think it has done a decent job in terms of few other dynamics that we look at but generally there is one place they fail terribly and that is the transmission mm. i think they still carry the problems for it exactly can we sit in the interior and talk about how it feels let's talk about the interior when we are inside good
So welcome to uh, the cockpit of the B-17. And as you can see, the design in this car is awesome. Mm -hmm. You have very nice curves. The quality of the seats and the way you feel when you sit in them, it's very comfy. And this is something we experienced when we did a review of the B-17, I think, uh, on the last review that we did. So I think for me, it, it sits pretty good. Uh, very nice options. And uh, I took on a traction control. Uh, M1 attraction control is standard. Standard on it. I don't know whether you. It has. Have, we have to confirm. You yeah. have to mention so that just in case US doesn't have. No traction. <laughs> traction control is standard. Yeah, we got the headlights. Uh, just Nico. Hey, Samze. But interior wise, I think I propose that this car looks very nice and comfortable. At a V2 Kikalia. The interior design. Yes. Is uh, well, it's 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 not bad, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Let's let's get to see the premium because I feel. Mm -hmm. Where do you think uh, something is not going right? No, it's, it's it's almost the same. Yes. But you see now the premium mm -hmm. has a, a better refined dashboard. Even the transmission shifter has it's a sequential one. Oh, the, the one that goes into yes. Shapes so you, you so you it. cannot you cannot accidentally shift. Okay. This one you just put it straight. Mm, but most autos are like this, so can't Yeah, but the sequential one makes it look better. The looks. Yeah, the looks. Yeah, the, the you are caring about the looks. Yes, because we, you know, you said we compare apples to apples. <laughs> okay, Mr. Looks. 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 Okay, Mr. Let's go check out your car. I think there's nothing much to talk here. There's nothing much to talk about. <laughs> uh, but it, it, I think it's it's awesome. Let's see what yours has. Uh -huh. And then we, we see what we can comment about it. Or you have something you want to add on. No, basically, I would say it's it's simpler than I thought. I think the the interior quality of the B17 is overrated. What do you mean it's overrated? Okabi, okabi, mazakuaheta. This car is built nice. It's nice. If there's any car, L look at this car from the lens of coming from a G11. First of all, <laughs> you understand? You see, yeah. the G11 was was I can say that was a mental case. Yes. Now, you having that buy. in mind, this is a very very like huge lift in terms of just designing this car and making it look awesome but let's let's call a spade a spade yes. when it comes to nissan mm -hmm. um even the g11 it might have had a very bad interior mm, especially the dash especially but the, the dashboard but it was in terms of comfort it was a very very comfortable vehicle correct even even the navara it was it is one of the most comfortable pickups mm -hmm. look at the nissan l grand again very co in, uh, in their comfort game is not very bad but the problem came in with the cost reduction measures yes. at nissan that is what made the them v off yeah especially on the cvt mm, the cvt even even the suspension yeah and we haven't talked about this as well because we will talk about it i think towards the end of the video we just compare apples to apples and see what other weaknesses do we get across the board between your car and this one yes can we go to yours and check Let's out go to my car and see Thank you. Yes. Welcome to the premier. Mm -hmm. And I must say, it is, and I want us to be as fair as possible. Yes. It is better designed compared to the G11, to the B17. I can see the wood finish going on. There are few the aesthetics. Earlier. Look, uh, uh, even, even the cluster visibility. You see, with yours, you get those analog gauges. Yes. The, the, the fuel gauge and what have you, but this one, the fuel gauge is digital and you even have a very good trip meter on it and at the middle there i can see you have something digital going exactly on, which is so mm -hmm. at the middle yes. is where we have the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge ah. yes and a trip meter over there you can be able to you see it's it, it's basically look at even the ac vents the, the design you know yours is a bit bulky the, the view of the road on the premio is better than that on the g11 that we have to agree the only thing that i feel probably you're losing out is your seats are not as comfortable as the one on the g11 but they are more spacious no the g the b17 they are more spacious yeah, it's more spacious you know you've mentioned g11 now guys <laughs> will be like <laughs> so they are most the seats are more spacious but they're not it's as comfy spacious. there's just something about how the seats there feel compared to this one that i feel i think yours are a little bit on the lower but in terms of the few nitty nitty gritty things i think you have some few things going on um uh, that are what, better than that even yes. the dashboard design mm. so i i would say I, I, I didn't have the you don't have steering controls. controls i have on a basic premium i have steering controls imagine the way i'm adding new points okabi 
and 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 your your center console is a bit busy i don't know i don't know whether that's a good thing it's a good thing because see i have more storage compartments mm-hmm. i have at least uh even if it's it's not a real wood finish mm-hmm. i have wood finish that uh, actually that dual tone actually it's a more of a three tone black beige brown, and, and, brown. And, and and the wood finish brown mm. interesting i would want to see how this translates to the real driving experience when you look we go to do zero to 100 mm. and then we see what happens can we talk about the rear and the practicality let's talk about the rear and the practicality and see how they match up and compare so, so, but we have agreed the premium does not lose in terms of the interior no if you i don't know it it loses in some it gains some and the other one loses in some it gains some to be fair i think we can give them a split Let's give them a split. Yes. One you see, you're on talking one. about headlight adjustment. I you have, have it. it. Yes. Ah. So you have uh, idling stop traction control. Yeah, it man. has a plus because of the steering control. Let's just see for one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see so how practical premium. these cars are. Okay. <laughs> the Premio is built simple. Even the, the rear end of the Premio is also quite simple. But the different variants are normally denoted by this letter over here. You have G, you have... F you have X Zigo Zigo Kada Zigo Kada and uh, it's a very simple unit here. Uh, one thing is that it also has some very decent uh, boot space. Yes. Ah, uh, let me open no, it. It does no. refuse to open. <laughs> no, it does not. <laughs> okay, continue. <laughs> so uh, one big advantage that this vehicle has, yes. yes, the Sylphy might have slightly bigger boot space, but it has one big disadvantage. You cannot fold the rear row of seats but on the premium you can in case you have very bulky luggage you can just fold down the second row of seats for you to accommodate much more luggage so the, the only thing i'm going to snatch your point from here i don't know why they chose beige color for your boots Imagine it's in a chafu karaga. But it's an optional. It's, it's, it's optional. An option. So you can have they, different colors. They are colors. beige, this black. It's optional, just like the interior. But this one doesn't look like Kenya. This one, but it's a chafu karaga. It doesn't look like. Eh? But you see, it's it. Come up to attack a beige. I don't know why a beige. Come yeah. attack a black. I don't know why a black. Very good, Mr. Yeah. Okabi. Come, come on this end. Now we show you the magic. So no, I think the design. Which magic? First, tell me. Mona, una kona lock. Contingency. Contingency. Na jo unlike you. For me, Nissan walikuwa na idea wakasema, what if electronic ikatai kufanya, ufungo ikatai kufanya. Na ile, na ile knob. Iyo knob ikatai. Sasa, eh. iyo knob. Toyota's history of reliability. Eh, eh. Eh, Ningumu huya vitu zifele. I think it's a good thing having this. I know your Mazda 323 has one. Now, how can you have this on a Mazda 323? A vehicle that is 35 years old and, and, and still have this on a vehicle that is 8 years old. No, it's the beauty of engineering. There is no beauty here. It's contingency. This is backwardness. Contingency. <laughs> this is backwardness. <laughs> contingency. Aya. I think in terms of the looks of the rear. I think... Siju kama unaona kuna resemblance between the premium Apana, and... This one is more... Curvy. And taller. It's and taller. taller. It's, it goes higher. Yeah. But in terms of like the design, angalia, tuangalia, kwa kuna chrome katikati. You see the chrome? Mm. Like it, it looks like the same. Where the logo is the chrome. But I go boot. Even the nini, yeah. So I, I think there is some similance. The only thing that I have better than yours is this thing here. The black uh, appendages up or chini. Mm. Yours doesn't have. But again, it's... It's purely aesthetic. No problem. Now the boot again, unlike yours where you had to press twice. No, I was pressing the wrong button. Okay, but yeah. the other. No problem. Um, boot space when you may say slightly bigger than your premium. Uh, but again, as you said, my disadvantage is I can't flip my rear seats. But I have a hole that you can put your... No, assuming yes. you have, you have uh, something that is like four foot in Wider. terms of of, of width. width you can't put it inside there correct but if i have a tall pole i can kama niko na bendera ya kenya naweza unaweza weka hapo bendera pekee which yeah. would be you see that does not it does not still change the fact that this one is more practical Ag- agreed when it comes to folding your seats i think this one gives you more practicality, more practicality than, yeah. than what we have here exactly so what do we have remaining, Bwana Okabi? Let's do a 0 to 100 to see which one is faster. Yes. Then and test uh, the comfort of the drive quality and then come back and do the grading. Exactly. Correct? Yeah. Perfect. Get to position. Get to position. Uh-huh. Ata barabara leo iko clear sana. Kama barabara ya kwenda binguni. Bana. You ready? So, twende? Yes. Three. Uh, in one, two, three, go. Wow. Hey, my wow. friend. Wow. 
she has a heat. Hey, she has a heat. Oh, bro. Twenty eighty. Oh my god. Twenty. Oh, no, 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 no. So hundred. Boss. Boss. Boss CVT. I'm impressed. Yeah, even me. Oh, I'm impressed. I, I didn't expect that. The pressure of the time. I didn't expect I that. I did that. not expect. I told you I'm very optimistic. I didn't expect that. Yeah. I'm more there to confirm. No, no, no. I didn't expect <laughs> that. You. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. You ready, bro? Yes, we go. I'm ready in one, three, two, two, three, go. Hey. Whoa. <laughs> Did we hit a hundred? I doubt it. Did we hit a hundred? Please! Please! Premium gag! Premium gag! Premium gag! Top! 14.14. Oh, it was beaten! <laughs> it was beaten! <laughs> <laughs> it has been smoked by the city. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. Let's get to the most important part of this comparative review where we get to uh, see which one scores higher compared to this to the other yes. and uh, we are going to base these points on several factors number one is the prima facie that's the looks yes number two is the reliability mm -hmm. number three is the practicality mm -hmm. number four is the ease of maintenance and number five is the cost no you isn't maintenance and cost the same thing no cost of purchase okay the cost of purchase you put it under value for money yes there's one thing you've forgotten comfort no problem. Yes. No problem. So we do comfort. Ah, okay. So we start with the Prima Fashi. Prima Fashi, I would say, yes. and allow me, and I, Mbugwa, I want you to put on the, on the, on the because you said it's apples to apples. Yes. The 2016 facelifted Premium. Against it's, the B17. Against the B17. Mm -hmm. Trust me, the facelifted one does look better i agree it looks nicer and compared if we if we put it against these i think for me where i stand i feel these cars have to share a point in terms of looks they have to share a point yes. so it is one point. for the premium and one, one for the, for the so so it's one 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 let's talk about reliability reliability will come be without fear and contradiction <laughs> i'll give you the reliability badge yes without argument so premium two to b17 <laughs> One. Uh, let's, let's talk about comfort. Comfort, yes. comfort. Comfort you would have to actually, I believe, they should share a point as well. No. You know why? Yes. Yours might feel comfortable until the suspension gives in. No, we will talk about cost of repairs and yes. maintenance. Mm -hmm. for so now, let's just comfort, give you one. Yes, for comfort, I think we have experienced, we did the review of the premium and then we did the review of the B17. All of us agreed that it, it is, feels it is, nice. It is more comfortable. Yes. Yeah. So B17 gets two, Premio gets two. Uh -huh. Now let's go to the cost of maintenance. Cost of maintenance of which, of which I feel the Premio wins. Of which I feel is the same thing as reliability. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, so can we can again. we check off the cost of maintenance? Because it's the same thing. It is very important because yes. we, we are looking at uh, Nissan has very finicky suspension systems. Bushes. Bushes in Aisha every now and then, mm. arms, links, killer kit. So um, in terms of, of cost of maintenance, of cost of maintenance, and even the frequency, premium, downtime actually, downtime. In terms of downtime, the prim, the the premium definitely wins because it's 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 a, it will have more hours on the road compared to the B17. I agree. Yes. So premium leading at three, B17 coming in at two. Now we go to the final thing: value for money. Value for money? Uh, my premium costs one point seven. Your B seventeen. Yeah, B seven. Not one, my premium. One point seven. One point seven million Kenya shillings. This goes for two point three. Two point three. A hooping difference of half a million. Half a million, yes. And I want to spin it to you the same way you always like spinning at me. Do you think the cost of repairs and maintenance between these two cars is worth that margin? I would say day and night, it's worth because yes. this is the reason. Mm -hmm. One year down the line, if I was to sell my premium, I'll sell it for more or less the price I bought it for. The resale price. The resale price mm -hmm. is way higher compared to, you, you lose more in terms of the vehicle's value, right? Okay. Okay. That is one thing. The other thing, this car is more durable compared to this one. Okay. I understand those points. The point I wanted to put across is, third, do you no, think third. the cost of maintenance? I want you... The rest of the other things fantastic. Best with the reliability credit. Definitely this car will sell better than this one over a period of time. That one is no argument. That point you've already won. So I'm asking, do you think in one year I'll spend 600 more 
not in even, terms of repair not even 600 more let yes. me ask you mm. would you buy a torn shirt because it's cheaper no 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 Okabi, why 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 is it so difficult for you no to I, 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 want, I want to give <laughs> a, a, would you buy a torn shirt because it's cheaper a torn is is a bad analogy you can say will you buy okay Let's just stop it. Would you buy an inferior product because it's cheaper? It's not it's not inferior. It's, it's just it's, a product that has a little bit of negative issues. That is where so means the inferior. question is the question is <laughs> do you think the negative defects are worth the price difference? Yes, I think be they an are. honest man. A be, honestly speaking, yeah. even with 2.3, yes. I would still buy the premium. You will still buy I will the still buy the premium. Okay, for me I think with the difference, the price difference okay, with 600 500 price difference. I can as well take this car and survive with it. I think the cost of keeping the transmission running, the cost of doing maintenance, the cost of keeping this car basically in the same level and output and performance to your car, considering the price difference, if I can set aside 300,000 to this car and buy this car at 2 million, I will still be saving 300,000 from yours. No that problem. Is, that, that is my, 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 my humble... M my analogy on this is... Yes. Well, you see, the same way we talked about peace of mind. And I'll tell you, peace of mind is something that is very, very, very important. 100%. Uh, let's look at other things. Yes. Apart from just reliability, let's look at technical ass assistance. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. you, you have traveled to Nambale. Yes. And you need an S3. CVT Kakufa. That is one thing. Mm -hmm. Number two, meenda Nambale, mm. unataka shock. Availability is equal. Problem is in a Kufa. No, no, like, would you find the shock of a B17 in Nambale? I don't know. Of a G11, probably. A G11, G11. Because G11. even right now, even in Nairobi, parts of G11, they are not as available mm -hmm. as... But now, the good thing, because it's a totally different pr platform from the G11. This one? Yes. This one, is, is, it shares the same... Uh, it's a totally different chassis. What does it share? What does it share with Nothing. You? Not even the TIDA... I think it does. It, it would share a few things with the Tiana. Oh, the Tiana. Yeah. Ah, good. But okay. you see, again, these are vehicles that are not very well accepted. Yeah. And and uh, uh, there is also another thing I would like to tell you as why the Premio wins. Yes. The Premio has been accepted in Kenya not because of the copy mentality, but it's because it's a vehicle that is reliable and dependable. It it uh, it has proved its time. Exactly. So now we are having three three Okabi. Your Premio is getting three points. And the B17 is getting three points because of the value for money. But I think, I the, think to be fair, to be fair, and this is something that we should have done before. Yes. I think we need to give reliability a little bit more. No, points. yes. Because there's no way, there's no way. There's no way you can compare the two. No, no. <laughs> there's no way. So on reliability, I'll give you an extra point just because I feel reliability has to carry a bit of more weight exactly. than this car. So you are, yours gets four points, yours get but three. this one gets three points. And that has just proven that Gary ni Toyota and Nissan in Nissan. So can we sign out? Let's sign out. I hope this has been an insightful episode. Naskia Gary Ebra in Aduka CVT. Ujama, ujama gari. Where? <laughs> but in totality, I think there are two awesome cars that it depends with what you're working with. But we cannot we cannot we cannot run away from the fact that between the two this the, car sits a little bit way ahead of, of the, the B17. B17. That is true. So uh, again you can get this uh, both of these cars, I mean both these cars yes. at Auto Select by Conversations, very low mileage. Good quality, good auction grade. And the good thing I'm going to tell them is if they buy this car, regardless of the problems they have, we have a guy to take care of them. Yes, we have we have technical, we can assure you of technical support. support. Yes, preventive maintenance, where to deal with the problems, how to deal with the problems. They are a guy who is readily available with extensive experience yes, to with deal with this the car. B17. So especially. it won't be as much problematic as you will have, have it if you do not have a guy to help you. You know, with the premium, we do not even need to give you after sales <laughs> service. <laughs> anyway, oh my God, guys, tell us in the comments, are you team premium uh, or team or are you 17 team? Yes. But you are a cheat code. Ah. Gary in Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> cheat code. Gary in Nissan. Apana, Nissan in Nissan too. <laughs> so, bye-bye, guys. See you on Monday so that we get to get more insights.